Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Grady Tech and these are the 25 must-have apps on Xiaomi Mi5. So guys, the first app is Gallery Vault and once you open it up, it'll ask you for the password and when you install it for the first time, it will allow you to set a new pin. So let me just enter my pin. So we can basically organize all our hidden files, whether it is images, videos, normal files into folders. And the best thing about this particular app is we can backup we can hide any file from anywhere in the phone. We can simply share that file to Gallery Vault and we can organize them in these folders. And whenever we want, we can export all the hidden files in a specific folder to a specific location. That's something we won't find in other apps. And this is by far the best app to hide your personal content. So just give it a try. The next app is App Dialer. So before that, let me just show you my app drawer. So as you can see, there are lots and lots of apps over here. So it's pretty tough to search through all these apps for one single app, even though all the applications are arranged in an alphabetical order. So in that situation, App Dialer helps you. So let's say I want to open MX Player. I can simply select M and X and it will give me a shortcut for MX Player. Now let me search for Play Store, P L and I have a shortcut for Play Store. So it basically allows me to access Play Store or any application very easily. As long as I know the name of the app that I want to open. The next app is Camera MX and this is how it basically looks. So the only reason I use this is for the live shot. So let me just create one for you. So I'm just gonna shake this and I'm gonna take this picture. So now if we go to the gallery, this is the shot I've taken. And if I press on the image, I can see what happened few seconds ago. So I guess that's a feature you can find in iPhone. And if this is a feature that you want, then you can definitely try camera MX. By the way, we can only view that video using this camera MX app. The app actually saves the image and the small video in its own folder. So we can use other players like MX player to watch even this video. So a very handy feature. The next app is Truecaller. Every time you get a call from any unknown number, Truecaller tries to find out the contact name. And apart from that, it can also be used to block spam calls or any unwanted calls. And that's pretty much it about Truecaller. And the next app is Nova Launcher. And if you don't want to use the stock home launcher on MI5, we can always switch to something very close to stock Android. So this is Nova launcher. Let's just give it some time to load up all the apps. As you have just seen, there are quite a few apps. So finally it's loaded. So we get all the nice animations from the stock Android. So that's Nova launcher for you. Each and every aspect of this particular launcher is configurable. So that's something you might like. The next tab is Authy. So just in case if you have enabled the two-step authentication for your Gmail account or Facebook or Twitter, we can use this app to generate random codes. So it's definitely way better than storing or remembering some unique codes. So this is the app that I personally use. So as you can see, I have configured my LastPass, Google, Cloudflare, Facebook and Dropbox. So every time I'm going to sign in to one of these accounts, apart from my account password, it's going to ask me for this unique code. So if it matches with this code, then only I'll be able to log in. So if you have not enabled two-factor authentication for your Google, for your Gmail, Facebook and other online accounts, I would suggest you to do that. Next we have Gallery Pick, which is a gallery app. Personally, I don't like the gallery app that comes inbuilt. So I use this particular app. Like any other gallery app, it comes with all the basic bells and whistles. But additionally, you get some nice features like if the image has location information, it will give you an option to see that the app will give you an option to see where that particular image was taken. So let me see if it has it. So show in map. Let me select a map. Map application. 
Now I'll be able to know where I have taken that particular picture. Going on next, we have GSAM battery monitor. So as the name suggests, it's an app to track or monitor your battery usage. So if I select this option, I can see how the battery discharged. I can even see the rate of charging. I can see the CPU frequency changing. I can see when the battery has dropped significantly. If I select this option, I can see which apps are consuming more battery on this device. The next app is Disk Usage. This app gives us a nice graphical representation of what's consuming space on our device. So this is the 32 GB variant and I have about 2 GB of free space. So if I want to know which apps or what is consuming a lot of data or space on my device, I can use this app to quickly figure that out. Android folder alone is consuming up to 9 GB. So in that OBB is taking up 7 GB. So I can see the package names and figure out which apps are consuming a lot of space and maybe delete those apps or uninstall those apps. I can also see that the camera folder has occupied almost 1 GB of space. So I can see if there are any huge videos taking up too much space or something like that. So it's a nice tool to visualize your internal storage. Next we have cam scanner, which is like a document scanner. Let me take a picture in this angle. Now I can select the image. It actually selects or automatically crops the area with text, but for some reason it was not doing now. So once I've selected the image, I can press this button and now it will crop the image and enhance the text. So if you're going to use your camera to take pictures of any documents, then it's better you use this app instead of the normal camera app. It comes with other advanced features like copying all your files to a single folder or transferring them to the online cloud, taking a backup to your Google Drive or even your Dropbox. So it comes with all these nice features. The next app in our list is AirDroid. So if you're looking for some kind of a PC suit for your smartphone, then this is your solution. So using this one application, we can access each and every aspect of our phone. By that, I mean call logs, messages, contacts. We can backup them, restore them. We can send messages directly from your browser via this app. Just give it a try. The next app is Push Bullet. So when the app came out, it used to do just few things, but now it does way too many stuff. So primarily it is used to mirror notifications from your phone to your computer and easily share information like links, text, images, maybe even videos or any file less than 25 MB from your phone to your browser or even your friends. It's more like a messaging tool like WhatsApp to communicate with your friends and other devices like PCs and tablets. So an amazing app, a definitely must have app, so give it a try. The next app is ES File Explorer, which is a gorgeous looking file explorer with a lot of functionality. So we have this tabs kind of a view. Apart from being a file manager, it does way a lot of stuff. So it's going to take an entire video to just explain about what this app will do. For the namesake, it's a file explorer. It's a one in all and all in one app. So definitely give it a try. And this is definitely the must use file explorer on any Android device. The next app in our list is MX player. And this is once again, by far the best video player out there. So when you swipe on the left side of the screen, it will change the brightness. If you swipe on the right side, it will change the volume. And if you swipe from left to right or right to left, it will seek. So it's a very intuitive player and definitely a must have app. The next app is Brave and it's also called as Link Bubble earlier. So whenever you open a link using the Brave browser, it will open the link in a bubble just like the Facebook chat head. So let me just give you a demo. So guys, now I'm going to open few links. As you can see, every time I open a link, the link is being opened in this bubble. So when I click the bubble, it will open up the browser. So I can access this web pages without leaving the Google application. So it's definitely a must have app, especially for productivity freaks like me. So guys, the next app in our list is TSF Shell Launcher and that's the one I'm currently using. So it has some amazing transitions, awesome features 
Even after a month, there were few things that I really didn't know about this browser. It's an amazing launcher and even after using this launcher for an entire month, there were new things to find out about this launcher. So as you can see, it has some amazing transitions, many customization options and everything about this launcher is simply amazing. As of now, this launcher is available for free in India. The next app in our list is Share It. Most of you might have already known about this app. So using this app, we can transfer or share files from your Android device to any other device having the same application over Wi-Fi. To send files from your device, click send and select the files that you want to send. And to receive files, select receive and basically wait for the other person to send files. So that's pretty much it about share it. Next we have hello, which is an alternative for the stock messaging app. So there isn't much about this app to say in terms of functionality, but it's just a very simple looking messaging app. So by the way, I have enabled the night mode on this app. So going on next, we have OneNote, which is a note taking app. We have the application on the web, on the desktop and probably on all the other platforms out there. So whenever you have a lot of information to store in an organized way, use OneNote. I don't usually take notes on my phone, but I use OneNote to read them. So I add all my notes on OneNote using my computer, PC and read them or access them using my mobile device. So that's the way I use it. The next app is Here Maps, and the best thing about this app is it has in this app we have the option to download maps of a city or a state or even a country and if it is possible we can even download the map of an entire continent so we can download the map and use it for offline navigation so that feature was recently added in the google maps but it is there in here maps way before google maps and the best thing is the map that you have downloaded won't expire in the here maps whereas if you download an area in Google Maps, the map will expire after a few days and you have to download the same map once again. And in this app, we have something called as offline mode. So once you enable that, you won't be using any mobile data for this app. The next app in our list is Lemma, which is basically a location based automation app. So it uses the cell phone towers in our area to know where our location is. It basically records all the cell phone towers in one area and figures out where we are. Based on that information, it performs few tasks. I have configured it in such a way that whenever I am at home, it will turn off mobile data and whenever I leave my home, it will automatically turn off Wi-Fi. So we can do some nice automation tasks like that using Lemma. The next app is Field Smart Remote. If you don't want to use the MI remote, you can always use third party apps like Field Remote to access your infrared sensor. I have already configured this app to work with my Panasonic television. So this is the power button, these are the volume buttons and this is how the app pretty much looks. The next app in our list is Pi Control. So this is how the Pi Control looks like. Unfortunately, I've still not configured it. So it's looking pretty ugly or it has way too much information in it. But I usually use it for just three buttons, back, home and recent button. So as you can see, we have various triggers. I can access the Pi from here, down from here, from the right side and from the right bottom. It is a very customizable app and the screen on MI5 is pretty long and I can't access the notification buttons every time when I'm using the device in a single hand. In that situation, I find the Pi controls to be very handy. Going on next, we have Pocket. So if you want to read any web page when you're offline, we can save that web page to Pocket. It will download that web page and make it available for you to read it. So these are all the web pages that I stored to read it later, but never got the time to read it. The next app is TouchPal, which is basically a keyboard app. So let me just show you how it looks. So guys, this is how the TouchPal keyboard looks like. And we have a basic swipe feature. So hello. And besides that, we have some nice gestures. Like if I want to remove that previous word, I can swipe from the back button over here and the previous word will be deleted. And if I want to insert numbers, instead of doing a long press, I can simply swipe up to insert numbers. And besides that, we have navigation keys and an inbuilt clipboard manager. And recently, they have added a new feature called text expander. So if I want to enter my mail ID, I can simply enter MID and it will replace that with my mail ID. So it has some nice gestures, inbuilt clipboard manager, navigation buttons, 
basically the entire package. The next app is TTorrent which is a torrent client and this is by far the best torrent client that I have been using on android device. There are other torrent clients but they don't download the entire torrent properly so I prefer this particular app. So there you have it guys these are my list of top 25 must have apps on Xiaomi Mi 5. So anyway these are the apps that I want you to try out and let me know if there are any other important or cool apps out there so that's it guys thanks for watching this video i hope you found this video to be helpful if you like this video give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this